everybody how you guys doing welcome back to the channel thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video that i made for you guys really appreciate it if you guys could do me a favor hit that thumbs up button i greatly appreciate that that helps me out in the youtube algorithm also maybe consider hitting that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber yet and you want to catch more content and that notification button so that you know every time the new video drops also there's a black and white oblong button down there uh it's got the word join on it if you could join the channel that also helps me out a lot Go dog a bone. Greatly appreciate it. I'd like to thank Nick M for being the newest channel member. Uh, also, the benefits of being a new channel member is you actually get to see the content uh, earlier than when it goes public for everybody else. So today's video, we're going to talk about a very cool operating system I found. I've never heard of it before, so we're going to take a look at it together. And it installs differently, so I'm going to look at installing it as well as reviewing it. All right, so we are going to take a look at Alt Linux. That is the distribution that we are talking about that uh, is, I've never heard of it before. It's a Russian-based independent distribution. Uh, I, it's been around for a minute. It's on version 10.1. I'll go ahead and jump over to the screen here and show you. I have it installed. And here it is in my virtual machine. Uh, this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's got Russian text at the bottom. Uh, the web page is in Russian or English, uh, so you can actually see the Russian, you know, the, the actual Russian version as well. But it's, it's pretty, pretty, I'm going to go ahead and enter into it and give you an overview of what it looks like. Uh, oh, wait, let's go here. I think I got to unpause it and we're going to hit enter. And this is loading into it. But the installation process is very, very different as well. So I want to I want to show you guys that. But I want to show you that it logs in and it does work. I've customized it a little bit, as you can see. Um, if you guys are a, mat, a mate lover or even a cinnamon lover, it's very similar. Um, here's the menu, yada, yada. Okay, so we're going to look at that. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to delete this virtual machine. Uh, and then I will um, reinstall it again here on camera live with you guys. Okay. Okay, so the screen before this, we'll go to the previous one. This is where we're setting our boot password, okay? After it did the settings, it wanted to, to actually change the boot. It's letting me know that the new boot password is boot. I want to change that. We're going to change that to our super cryptic secret password that nobody could ever guess. And then we're going to set it to that because I will never remember that the password to configure boot is boot. That just doesn't make sense. Not when I need a super cryptic password. So then uh, we're going to go here. Uh, the next thing, like I said, this is not your typical Calamari's installer or any other installer of those makes or versions. So right now we're looking at um, setting up the network adapter. It's going to be this right here. Um, it's going to be a wired one. It, that's not that's the MAC address for it. But, it, you know, this is not the default gateway for me. So but either way. So we're going to accept what it is because it's doing DHCP right here, which is right here. Um, so it's going to find its own stuff. 
And then we're going to set a password for the system administrator. Once again, a super fucking cryptic password is always required. And now we're going to set up our user. So we're going to do this uh, comment. We're going to make it me. Ugly. AF. And we're going to set up our super cryptic password for our user as well. And it should never be the same as root. And then this is now we're done the release note. So if you want to go to the wiki, the documentation, whatever you want to do is right there. And we're going to click finish. And so now we're rebooting and we should be able to reboot right into our system right away. As soon as we're done with that, I'll unpause it. Okay, so here we are rebooting into the alt workstation. Let's go ahead and make this full screen. So now we're going to type in one, two, three for our login screen. And we're logging in. Don't show this message, whatever. And so this is what we look at. Now let's go ahead and fix this resolution right down here is your display right here on the icon, um, which we can configure right here, or you go right here and you can go to, oh, they got a control center. Nice. Hit displays. And we're going to select 1920 by 1080, which is going to be a very good. We're going to hit apply and we're going to keep this configuration. So we are good to go. So now this is what it looks like when you very first log in. First off, I want to simply uh, touch base on the fact that alt is one of those distributions that is not geared specifically for anything. It's just the base with the basic minimum tool sets in, involved in it. To make it go either way it's great if you want to use it as a workstation for you know like connecting to a server or you know even putting a server on it and using it as a front end to um, access from home or running a business on it you know you can bait you know build what you want from there if you want to make it into a home desktop environment then hey that's great too it's pretty awesome it's very flexible it's it's a very slim it's it's great for a slim client really is what it is um and so uh that's why it's got the network servers right here that you can if you click on it you can go oh wait let me let me go back to the uh to the thing so you can see okay so if you click right here you got your network servers right here and you got your windows network and then you got a host 30 right here so i mean it's already got some servers already set up into it mild ones not your usual ones like your apache or http or anything like that but it's got it's got server capability already set up for it so that's that's the cool thing so first off uh, this is a pretty decent little wallpaper if you like light and i don't like this dark light theme at all so let's go here and let's go to uh, control center we're going to go to appearance and the look and feel Ooh, black mate let's see what that looks like oh wow that was instant Let's switch pretty oh that okay so now what we're gonna have to do is i think we're gonna have to log out or even reboot and come back in for that to work so we're gonna hit close on this close on this let's go ahead and log out let's see where is the log out oh, right here um suspend hibernate shut down oh i guess we're gonna have to restart there is no just log out so we'll restart it what the heck wow that was Pretty doggone quick for a shutdown that's pretty darn doggone quick for a log back in it's very lightweight so <laughs> that's pretty cool the first login always takes the longest because it's building stuff and applying stuff so now let's see if this has changed that has changed so now that's applied globally so now let's go back to control center let's change this wallpaper here oh wait not that close where's wallpaper i would have thought it was there screen oh it's got screensaver nice so it's got x server or uh, x screen saver in here that's kind of cool uh, so we're going to close on that I haven't seen that in a while added into anything so let's um right click oh change background okay so that always works so now it's building up it's oh let's look at this one that's the one that i used originally in the other one that i found that's cool there's that one that one's kind of cool what's this one this one's multiple oh it's a slideshow one 
Interesting. Okay. So I like this one. This one looks the best. It's they got a bunch of cool ones. See if I can make this bigger for you guys. They got a couple of cool ones. I mean it's pretty cool. This is I think their green traditional logo. I'll move this out of the way so you can see it. Traditional desktop environment. That's the yeah, that's funny. We'll go back here. We'll keep this one. See, this is the Mate desktop one that they have right here. Mate, Mate, I don't know how you want to call it. Who cares? It's not really super important. There's been a lot of argumentation over that over the over the decades. But anyhow, we'll keep this one. This one looks cool. So it's bright enough, but yet still dark enough what I like. So uh, on the desktop, you've got these folders right here. Uh, we already talked about the um, the network servers that are available. Uh, about system if we click on it it takes us to the alt workstation 10.0 the product page um the actual website and the forum they, all the you know things you want to do so apparently they're using mozilla firefox out of the box let us go to help and find out what version we're on 102.6 so that is the version that we're on right there so let's go ahead and close out of that nothing to see i mean mozilla's mozilla so let's go ahead and look and see how lightweight it actually is. So this is the control panel. These are your favorites right here, which has your terminal, which is the Mate terminal. Okay. Um, you have your favorites. And then let's go over here to um, for text editors. They have Pluma. They have Sound. And they have System Monitor. Uh, for all applications, let's go here. Um, for accessories, the only thing, they've got Ingrappa, the archive manager. they got Mate Calculator. Uh, they got nano too as a text editor nice um nano's not a bad one a lot of people you know hate on nano but i don't have a problem with nano they also got a screenshot for education they got new plot then for graphics they have dark table installed eye of mate which is eye of gnome which is the gnome version of their uh, image viewer so they've renamed it to eye of mate uh, which if you open it, it's going to be just like yep eye of gnome there you go <laughs> as funny as can be um for um they've got hugen batch processor hugen Cal calibrate lens hugen panorama creator interesting so never heard of hugen they got inkscape they've got libre office apparently installed mate color selection that's a color correction tool uh internet they have firefox pigeon mozilla and you can do desktop sharing so uh, for office uh, which desktop sharing is kind of like a vnc viewer or whatever uh for office um they obviously have libre office for sound and video vlc they got cheese and simple screen recorder and also a sound uh which uh, sound i think is you can change the volume of your sound your sound volume and sound effects kind of like a front end for for uh also i believe um correct me if i'm wrong i can't remember guys but either way it's there uh, and then they got VLC. Now VLC makes sense. It's the Swiss Army knife of all media players. Uh, it plays everything from videos to music to um, even streaming. You can use it to stream TV services and stuff like that. Uh, system tools, they've got um, Alt Media Writer. That's apparently their USB writer. Uh, app install. Uh, oh, wow. You could use this to install apps from official uh, websites. So type in our administrative password. Our super secret one take a look at that and see what happens it opens up oh whoa third party applications as super user you can install any of these skype discord that's where you can install discord brave browser even how do you select it I guess highlight it in the install. Brave is installing. Holy crap. Uh, this is going to take forever. But they have. Oh, it creates an installation script. And, and, and then it runs the installation script. That is cool. I just saw IPTV Nader. So you can it won't stream IPTV services, which I know a guy who provides those kind of services. If you want to hit me up, I can let you know about it. Um, 
jet brains um pie charm uh rust desk they have a wow you could really expand on this let me make this bigger so you guys can see this uh, let me see if i can make the i cannot make the the, the font any larger than this this is kind of cool only office they have skype they team viewer be okay it's installing brave right now as we speak it even should ch modded into it and it's doing wow error can't assure the alien command from package error can't assure there was some something wrong during installation wow interesting so it aired out so uh, let's try if i can get something different other than that um that's not so big let's try discord so it's installing discord let's see what it does it could be also that this is a virtual machine and there's something funky going on with it uh, and that's why it's having an issue doing that so let's see also historically i've had issues with brave before in the past installing it's one of the reasons why i left and went to vivaldi so let's see if it runs that so it's issuing and building the the actual script right now the the bash script and now it's running the bash script error cannot assure the alien command from package uh there is some error during installation process well for some reason it's erroring out so i don't know why it's doing that but let's go ahead and close this and then let's go ahead and actually um see if we can find it in the package manager right here so it's probably going to open up some the oh it's the wow the software store for um no i believe interesting so let's let that do its thing it always takes a minute for it to initiate okay so now it's initiated um let's go ahead and search for how about the is where's the search box here explore uh, chat oh what is this doing uh, audio and video see what turns up why is this not loading this is insane oh i think i know why yes i gotta do updates let me update this real quick hang on so you should always, the first thing you do after you install is do an actual update so that you can apply any changes that have been made to the repository tree structures or anything like that. Cause it's going to update all of that stuff. So, and unless it's like released yesterday, you're not going to be on the latest version, especially if you're downloading this like a couple weeks later. So general rule of thumb, always do the, the system update as soon as you boot in. Uh, after you set your display resolutions, do the system update. All right. So we're going to do this and let it finish. And then we're going to take a look at that other program again. And then this one, see if we had the same issue. And right now, if you can see it on screen, I can make it bigger for you. You're looking at around uh, 324, 719 packages that it's updating. So hang on. Okay, now it's uh, preparing the packages and get ready to apply the changes. That only took about three minutes to download everything. Well, I wouldn't say three minutes, maybe two and a half. Okay, so it gave us a little white dialog box saying what it did, and it's all done. So we're going to hit close, and then we're going to go back to where the heck was that tool? It's not the package manager. App install right here. I hope I don't have to reboot again. So it's looking for the apps that are available. I guess it's scraping and scouring. Maybe this list is smaller now. Who knows? All right, let's go for let's something easy like Discord. Well, not easy, but you know, Epson's can do. Notice how it's got the little download button there. I wonder if that's different let's let's find out are there any other ones that have that no there are no other ones that have that so let's do discord we're going to hit install it says discord is installing let's make this larger 
see if it does it again. If it does it again, then I don't know what the problem is, other than it could be a virtual machine. Um, it's generating, as it shows right here, the actual the actual um, script. This is kind of like a, it kind of reminds me a little bit, it has some cool tools in it that are kind of smattered in between that is like uh, MX Linux has some some pretty cool tool sets for the apt package manager and for like a Debian, being a Debian based thing. So it kind of reminds me a little bit of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause it because I don't want you know spend a whole lot of time waiting on this. It's using eGit for the instead of um git git, you know, like regular git, it's using eGit. So now it's running it. Warning, warning, building, 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 git, git. Oh, this is doing way better than what it did. Eh, it, that's what it needed. It needed the update to run. And so, wow, it's actually getting it and installing it. And it's doing an RPM build, uh, Automark. Yep, it's doing RP. It's building it right now. So that it's actually working. That's what it needed was the update. So, like I said, make sure you do the system update first. And of course, everything else is going to run better too. The uh, regular other package manager and stuff like that. Which I have no interest in that. I mean, you, everybody knows how to use that. This is a cool little tool because this lets you add on like Edge, Microsoft Edge browsers right there. I can see it. Uh, Brave is just above it, which we're, you know, which we took a look at earlier. Warning the use file scripts and it's building it right now as it's doing it. So I'm going to hit pause until this is done and then we'll make sure that it installed it. Right now it's doing the post file triggers. Uh, it'll be wrapping up pretty quick been about a minute okay so it finished because close is now there so let's go ahead and go to the menu and let take a look for uh discord let's type let's just search it up right here and it's right there bam look at that just like that it installed discord uh this is really what discord does when it first starts up so um yeah there it is instant as pie as can be uh wow you can scan the qr code and log in with your thing i'm not going to do that to log into the tlt discord by the way you can do that if you'd like the description or the the link is in the description down below so go ahead and close it out of that i'm going to call this good um and we have successfully installed that package with that so there's that in the menu okay so um for system tools of course you got cpu x which tells you what you're using for your cpu and a smattering of other tools like the Mate Terminal, which we looked at earlier. For administration, you've got Grub Customizer, which is kind of cool, but it's very something that you shouldn't play with unless you really, really know how to customize Grub. I do have a video on customizing Grub. It's, in my opinion, hoard as hell, but people say it's actually pretty good as far as the production quality, but the content is actually really good. So it, with this here, you open it up, you could, of course, add or remove kernels from here if you want or entries uh, under general settings you could actually uh, change the length of time of the boot menu to show before it does that and then in appearance you can actually add files you know like a picture a customized picture and you could even set the resolution right here go ahead and make this bigger i keep forgetting to make these things bigger for you guys you you can set the the resolution right here by changing it to 1920 by 1080 whatever and it'll do that as well so you can actually customize grub in uh, in any uh, debian based distribution very easily with this grub customization tool and you have to use it as a super user so you have to log in with the root so there is that we're going to cancel without updating it so uh there's that for under administration tools they got the rpm install uh and then for preferences of course these are different preferences like appearance and stuff like that anything that would be categorized as that so that is a look at the application menu. Then, of course, the standard bar at the bottom here. Is, you, you see we've got Discord launched right here. So it stays launched and minimizes to the tray. We're going to quit Discord. Uh, you got your display launcher, or you, you're going to configure display, your sound man, your sound, your clipboard, and your network. And then, of course, a calendar. One of the things I want to take a look at real quick is, oh, click on this. Let's see if they have HTOP installed. They do not 
Okay, so let me see if we can go here, open up a terminal. Window key does that. Let's go to the system tools and then terminal. What did I have it in? Right here. In, okay. It, it doesn't show it in the thing, but they do have it installed. Weird. Okay, let's make that bigger. So look at that. I'm using one gig out of a doing the package manager, opening up and installing a bunch of stuff. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm using one gig worth of service right now, which is not bad. It's very lightweight. Uh, I think when I boot it on a cold boot, it might be like four gigs probably. Um, I, I mean, not four gigs, but uh, under a half a gig, 400 uh, megabytes. So um, let me pause the video, reboot. And Okay, we are rebooting right now. Updates. So now, logging in, going back to our configuration. Let's launch terminal. And then we're going to make this bigger, and we're going to hit HTOP. And let's do this to make it, make it bigger. Look at that. 458 megabytes of disk space right here. That's, I mean, of gig, you of RAM used. So, so you're under a half a gig of RAM. That is lightweight as hell. This is impressive. So there you go. We're going to close terminal. There you go, guys. That is a look at Alt Linux. Simple, basic, lightweight as hell, even with a... Mate, a very nice, not XFCE type desktop. Uh, it's a full fledged desktop environment. So, I mean, it's, it's looking, it's looking good. I think it's something worth looking at. I've never heard of it till now. You guys have just heard of it. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. The installer is different. Uh, I walked you through that. So that's why this video is a little longer, but either way, guys, take a look at Alt Linux. It's Russian based. It's based off of Debian, apparently. Um, not Ubuntu in itself. It's got its own customized tools, a little bit like uh, App Linux. I don't know how many they have in there, but I didn't go through all the tools, but I imagine they got some tools in there. Um, yeah, all in all, I think it's a pretty good one to actually recommend if you're new to Linux. Uh, as a new user, you might want to consider this one, actually, if you have any, you know, savviness about, you know, uh, knowing what you like and want in your desktop. This is something you can do. So uh, either way, you guys tell me what you think down below. Great it. If it's for you, if it's not for you, whatever. Either way, y'all keep doing what you do. Keep on links and stay blessed, stay happy, and I'll see you in the very next one.